Hello, Roger Bisbee here from Skill Builder, back with another episode of Ask Skill Builder, where you send in the questions and we try to answer them. Here's a quick one from Alistair Stewart. He sent us a photograph of the inside of his garage. Looks pretty tidy. Nice. It's got enough sockets in there, Alistair. The problem is outside and he's uh, got a big skip, so there's nothing to see at the moment. But he's going to have a new block drive laid and then he's wondering about sealing it. Now, it's a good idea to seal it because that way it stops it getting stained and so on. And if you leave it, like my neighbour, uh, he's looking to seal it now, but he's got a hell of a lot of work to do just to clean it before he can seal it. There's loads and loads of different sealants around now. I've used probably most of them. The water-based ones are the easiest ones to use, and you've got to keep a continuous wet edge with them because once you start, if you stop, and then you go and have a cup of tea and then you start again, you'll see the join. You'll see there's a line across there. So keep the wet edge. Work on the whole thing from start to finish and it's very, very easy to do. He said, what product would I recommend? Well, as I said, there are so many around. They tend to be quite expensive, but one of the people that you could look at is Everbuild. Unfortunately, Everbuild's a great company. They made all these things that were basically cheaper. And then Seeker, who are expensive, bought Everbuild. So you can expect to see Everbuild prices creeping up. Their drive and patio sealers are, are, are good. You can get a matte or a gloss one. So I reckon the gloss looks horrible. It looks a bit synthetic and treacly. I will always go for the matte one myself, but that's your personal taste, uh, Alistair. But that, that's the kind of thing I would use and a, a great idea to do it before it starts to cause a problem. It, you may have to redo it after a couple of years, actually. That's only one thing that I could say um, that once you start with those things, sometimes they get worn out and so on and you have to go back over them. But yeah, good idea. Uh, here's a question from Joe the Builder. He says, thanks for the channel. It's a massive help as he starts his second house renovation. And what he's going to do with this one, he said he's got horrible old tiles here. You know, some people love those tiles, Joe. They, you know, they would travel miles to find some reclaimed tiles like that. So if you do take them up, don't, don't wreck them all. Just if you can leave them up with an old pickaxe and so on, they might have some value. Stick them on eBay, you never know. What he wants to do is rip all those up, put down some insulation, damp proof membrane, and so on, which would be a thousand gauge polythene sheeting. Bring that up the walls. And he's saying that in another house, he could see that that damp proof membrane is brought up the wall and tucked into the brick course where the damp proof course is. So it's basically overlapping it. And he said, but what does he do? Because he can't do that because it's already there and he's not building it from new. I wouldn't actually bother to rake out anything from that where that damp proof course is to try and tuck that polythene in because you would do more damage to the damp proof course than uh, you would do any good. And what we tend to do is just lap that polythene up the wall. It's very hard to stick polythene, but if you can find something, some kind of damp proof membrane, uh, there's plenty of things around that you can use paint on liquid damp proof products. Just paint that on the wall first bring that polythene up and just push that polythene hard against the wall. And then by the time you put your floor covering on there and whatever else you're gonna put on there, maybe plasterboard or skirtings or whatever, you will cover it. It's a tricky one because although there will be a little bit of damp behind that polythene, that damp would be there in the wall anyway. So you're not contributing to the damp, you are stopping it. And I think that tiny little bit that you might worry that's gonna creep up behind the polythene up the wall and escape is not worth bothering about. There are some sort of products like Torch On Damp Proof Course, if you like, that you can just torch on with a blow lamp and it's got a bitumen back and it will melt it against the wall. And so if you did that and then you just sandwiched the polythene slightly underneath it, you would, you would have a good job. But I wouldn't be over worried about it. So long as you get that up against the wall, running up the wall to roughly where the damp proof course is, try a little bit of sticky stuff. You could even use something like a waterproof duct tape just to keep that polythene stuck to the wall around the top. And um, what I'd say, Joe, is just do your best. And I don't think that uh, a tiny little bit of damp, especially in modern houses with central heating is going to be a problem. And here's a question from Michael Harvey. I've actually sent him an email because he needed to get on with the job. But anyway, here it is. This is what he's trying to sort out. 
there's actually a false ceiling in the kitchen and he's noticed it bowing and creaking and when he's investigated by taking up a couple of floorboards above he can see that what they've done is they've what, what we call counter battened which is that you put some new beams some new two by twos if you like or something like that across the old ceiling in the opposite direction and that way you make yourself a new surface that you can plaster the board onto and what he's saying is that the way these have been secured means that they're bowing in the middle and the whole thing is creaking he's wondering what he should do maybe just strip off the old beams we don't particularly like those fake beams that they put on and i agree with him there um he's going to take those fake beams off reduce the weight and then he wants to put some screws up and he's going to use penny washers to stop the heads of the screws pulling through the, the timber well you can actually get some large head wood screws if you prefer to do that that won't pull through but a kind of mushroom head ones but it's a good idea penny washer will work and what he's saying is he can drive those screws up into the, the ceiling and, and pick it up. Is that a good idea? Well, I think it's a good idea. I think you're spot on with what you're trying to do there. Be careful because it's very likely that when somebody put that across, that, that new counter pattern ceiling, that they use some kind of leveling device to get the whole thing level because maybe the old ceiling, the old floor, had dropped slightly. So what they're trying to do is give themselves a new level ceiling. So... If you start driving those screws up and pulling those new counter battens tighter against the joists, you may find that you end up with a bow in the ceiling. So first thing you need to do, work out what's level. If it's the floor, then cut yourself a batten that goes from the floor to the ceiling and use that as your gauging rod and then go round and tighten up those screws or put new screws in beside them to, to bring the ceiling up. But it's likely that what they've done is suspended it and just used the the screws as a method of rising and falling on the on the ceiling and nothing wrong with that at all some people would then put a spacer behind to stop it being driven up too far but there's various methods you can use but all i'm saying is don't tighten it up so much that you start pulling the whole ceiling out of line because then that would look terrible when you put the new plasterboard up you've then got a further job to do in leveling out that ceiling with some plaster so proceed with caution and i think you'll be fine so this one's from steve saunders now steve has got a gas meter and he says that he's a bit concerned um on the whole he's very happy with his new build but he said in in, in the gas meter there's some copper pipe that's coming out from the wall and he said it's not covered up, it's got no conduit on it or anything like that and he's not sure this is right. He said actually it's just covered with a bit of gravel. Now it is very common to find this now that people just run copper pipe up the outside. I stopped doing it at one point because we were getting the scrap guys coming around just cutting the pipe off the wall or not cutting it they were just wrenching it off the wall and taking it for their scrap so we started to cover it with something else some denso tape which is sticky horrible stuff just to make it look like a bit of iron and make it look less interesting to the scrappies but if you get people like british gas and all the rest of it they all run copper pipe on the outside buildings now it's a lot safer actually because if there is a leak it's just leaking to the outdoors rather than inside the house so for that reason and many others they they run it on the outside they leave it as copper because when it's copper you can kind of see what it is and it tends not to get damaged it's not going to corrode anytime soon and if it does if as a slight leak from it you will know about it whereas if you wrap it up you might not so don't worry about it steve it's just one of those things you can paint it you can cover it up with anything you want but uh, it's very common to find so here's a question from roger brancher now we're thinking roger brancher is that some kind of play on words roger brancher i don't know anyway it doesn't look entirely serious this question but it's a bit of fun so let's have a look at it anyway he sent some photographs and he said this house needs a bit of repointing and actually he's just kidding because the whole place is just falling down this is actually in Kathmandu, and he's taken these pictures and they just show you that this house is being propped up i mean it is seriously in danger of collapsing and there's a lot of places that you go in what you might what we previously used to call the third world and now we just call developing countries and Kathmandu is uh full of little places that people yeah of course they've got no building control to do what they can and you know with the available materials and um 
he said there's been an earthquake since then so he's pretty sure that this building is now gone well if it survived the earthquake then we all ought to learn something from it but yeah it does look pretty horrendous and then he's got a little photograph here of the bathroom and he said that was a little bathroom renovation but just shows you there's a there's a soil pipe going across here and they've just stabbed the basin waste into it yeah i know you know when you're traveling around i mean i'd love to go to Kathmandu. i've always fancied Kathmandu. yeah i've never been to the himalayas but um it's on my bucket list and you do see some amazing things when you're traveling you think our standards sometimes fall below a certain level but when you go abroad then you see some real horrors but you know again it's poverty isn't it people are making do and mending you know i remember going to cuba and uh there's all kinds of ingenuity going on there that to basically cope with you know a lack of materials and so on so so yeah they're clever people in some ways they're, they're cleverer than we are because they just have to they just have to make it anyway good thanks for sending that in anyway and uh, it's interesting to see for all kinds of reasons it's not so much cat man do but cat man don't <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.